Hello everyone and karibu to another episode of the Flashpoint Show. My name is Sonia Jessica and today we have an amazing guest with us. You are not ready for her. Evelyn, karibu. Yes. Thank you Sonia. Karibu, please introduce yourself. Oh, thank you so much. I am Evelyn Wangare Mbe. I am born again and I serve with Focus Kenya. And maybe I should say what Focus is. Yes, please. Focus is an acronym for Fellowship of Christian Unions. So FOCUS uh, serves, okay, operationally as a umbrella body that brings together Christian unions in, in, in colleges and universities in Kenya. Now, uh, you said you're serving as a STEM staff. So what does STEM stand for? Uh, STEM is short-term experience in ministry, and STEM is a program with FOCUS uh, where undergraduate students come on board uh, to the staff team to basically serve with students in colleges and universities. So uh, everyone, today we are talking about ministry, and Evelyn here is going to take us through her experience serving with uh, FOCUS Kenya. And as you've heard, it's a short term, short term experience. Okay, so how short is a short term? <laughs> it's indeed short. <laughs> you don't know it when one year is over. So it's a one year program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So did you begin serving when you were still in school or after you finished school? Uh, no, after I finished school, okay. uh, because uh, it's after school that you can uh, get into the program. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, how is it going? I think it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I first served in Kisi uh, with the universities around Kisi, Jomboya, mm -hmm. and uh, Rongo, and Kisi University, UKMTC Kisi. Mm -hmm. And I think being with students has been an amazing one for me. So I have known the life of students from when I was in first year, back in 2014, <laughs> <laughs> till now. So it's, it's an amazing journey, I can say, yeah. So did you always know that you would end up in ministry? Well, yes, and, <laughs> and no. Okay, it's hard to be Yeah, because when I was in second year, as I'd earlier mentioned, mm -hmm. I had those convictions and desires because I admired the STEM staffs that I had seen back in campus. Mm -hmm. So I liked what they did. I mean, working with a student and believing in them and even mentoring them. So I admired that because I am also a product of, a, of such kind of mentorship. Someone holding my hand and working with me as a young girl and helping me to even know God the more and to grow as a leader. So I really admired them. So that's where my journey began. And even attending focus conferences and getting impacted. I remember the first one I attended was in 2016 as a second year, just gotten into leadership in the CU. And um, we were having a theme, Entrusted to Entrust. It was basically a leadership and mentorship conference mm -hmm. for summit. So it's there that I really got to admire the work amongst students. I was a student still, mm -hmm. but then I really looked up to the staff then. And yeah. I mean, I have a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> <Good Sorry. morning. laughs> so when you begin uh, with focus, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the program or the work is to like walk and mentor students and do like, I mean there are very many students who come to the CU. So are you supposed to work with each one of them or is it individual? Is it like a group thing? How does it work? Uh, well for that um, I can give my example. Yes, I am um, one step staff in an institution mm -hmm. And there are plenty of students, you know, I cannot work with all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of identifying oh, which student do I want to bless, which student do I want to work with, okay. through maybe their needs. And then there are some who will approach you. Like I've had some who have come to me and they're like, oh, I want to be like you. Not that I'm that perfect, <laughs> you know. I want to be like you. I want to grow uh, as a... Christian, I want to grow in this aspect of life and so it starts from there. So it's really hard to work with every other student in a college or university mm -hmm. but then there comes the bit of identifying, I think I like that, which student can I work with, which leader can I mentor, 
who is you know who is reaching out to me okay and uh you mentioned that you were in the leadership in CU yeah. right Moi? yes so which department or location are you serving with well i served in the exec mm-hmm. as a vice secretary first then that <laughs> you have some comments <laughs> Then I later served as a vice chair person. Wow. Yeah, so as a vice chair, I was more into welfare mm-hmm. and also had aspects of working with people because the description was, you know, like meeting the psychological needs of members in the CU, physical needs like material. You know, there are people who came in with needs, they didn't have food, and we had to come together and find ways of coming up with uh, heavy food stuff and some money to be able to support them. So I think that still played a big role into who I am today. You know, I was in the scene, right? Uh-huh. But I, I didn't really get the chance of actually interacting with someone from a focus. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure how that would have been, but I think it's really nice or it might be blowing to know that the function, your function there is to work and mentor students. I think a lot of people don't get that point. So when you go to the series, do you get introduced and like, guys, my name is so and so, I'll be with you for the next one year. Like, how, how does it go when you go to the series? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Is that introduction? Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, when you are in a university or a college, you're either a lecturer or a staff or a student mm-hmm. or any other person probably working within campus. So there's need for that introduction because there are times I have met with students and they are like, which course are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> are you a first year? <laughs> first you know? yeah, so there's need for that introduction. And remember, there is those times you're given an opportunity to speak. Mm-hmm. I like introducing myself. I say, hi, I'm Green. I'm a STEM staff and my house is room number this and this. So if you want someone to speak to, please come to that room, you'll find me there. So I'm a student or a staff. Or even in the one-on-one uh, engagements, you meet a student out there, and you're like, hi, what are you pursuing? They say maybe they are doing a course in theology, uh, maybe the case of ARU. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be like, and you, what are you pursuing? <laughs> what are you? And then at that time, I'll be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. now I, <laughs> I am a focus staff, a STEM yeah. staff for that matter. And yeah. It must be a really interesting experience. Indeed, very really interesting. So what drove you there? What like made you, apart from you saw it and you admired it, what in you made you want to be part of focus right now? Uh, I think it's the the mission mm-hmm. of Focus Kenya, which is to equip uh, students in institutions of higher learning and associates for effective Christian living. And you see, like the phrase, entrusted to entrust, I mean, I personally have been impacted and I want to also mm-hmm. give back or rather impact. So I actually felt that I really need to take part in this mission. Mm -hmm. That someone reached out to me and I am now standing. I am creating impact in my sphere of influence. I want to also bring another student on board to have their values growing, to have them, you know, have a kingdom mindset and, you know, begin to work with God in such a way that they are influencing their sphere as well. So it's it's a cycle, I am impacted, then I want to impact someone, that someone is going to impact another. It goes on that way. Uh, there is um, kind of a slogan that we have at Focus, reaching students, changing nations. And it's like a student at a time, reach one student, and then that student is also going to reach another student mm-hmm. and another. And you cannot, you can see, you know, there's going to be a ripple effect at the end of the day. And with that, we're going to change the world. You know, actually, uh, the other day when I was in, I was in service, yeah. I think it was yesterday or the other Sunday, and we were talking about, um, you know, uh, what is it, when Moses was being, being brought up, and his mother would like tell him, you know, when the mother was nursing him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were told in church that that is how the mother instilled discipline, so how how being this is you're not an Egyptian you're an Israelite and all yeah. those values and everything. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we start with the students because they're the ones who are going to go out into the society. Mm-hmm. So if you do a good job with them, yeah. you are sure that we are 
they are dealing with the generations, you know, one student is at, at a time. Yeah, that's yeah. true, because when you meet a medical student, I mean, you're impacting a doctor who is mm-hmm. going to be treating patients somewhere, a lawyer who is going to be handling cases in court. And if they are grounded from the time they're in campus, then you're sure that when they get to their professions, and they're going to be leaders of impact and integrity, and they are going to also spread the gospel in their in their own spheres. I mean, a uh, theologian who goes out to start a church. I mean, there will be pastors of a difference if they are impacted from down there. I mean, we see who they are becoming even before they get there. For instance, I pursued education back in campus. And I know that when I get into a school to teach, if I get that opportunity, I will work with students who are in high school and I'd love to impact their lives as well. Why? Because I received a grounding back then. Would you want to go back to teaching? <laughs> Do you want us to have a, <laughs> a conversation? Yeah, um, well, I said I pursued education with guidance and counseling. Mm-hmm. So uh, I personally want to pursue psychology. Okay. Yeah, but when opportunities to teach would come, then I wouldn't mind. It's certain to serve the Lord yeah. in that profession. Yeah. But the Bible says that whatever you do, you do it. Mm. You know, as if you're doing but it, and you follow it. Yeah. <sighs> That's really nice. So, sure. how was campus like? <laughs> <laughs> campus was fun. Oh, God. <laughs> it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, when I joined campus, I wondered where on earth would I'd be blessed to study in Moi University. <laughs> <laughs> like Moi. I didn't like Moi from, you know, the word go. But then mm-hmm. the experiences I had after joining really caused me to every time say, thank God I came to Moi. Mm-hmm. Because that's where I found people who held my hand to work with me. And that's where my transformation came about. Yeah. So being in Moi was an amazing one. I have made friends who I have to this day. I mean, those campus friends, and we have stuck together to this very day. I think campus for me was really, really a good time. And I have a special friend who uh-huh. says that, you know, that, that God places you for impact positioning for writing. Yeah. I think it was uh, the thing for Satan last year. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure anyway. Mm-hmm. So the, every place that you are put is designed by God for a purpose. As much That's as you right. really don't like being there, mm-hmm. that there's a reason God has placed you there. And the faster you stop complaining, <laughs> the better. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get That's to experience true. so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So what was your favorite memory from back there? Yeah. Campus? Memories. Plenty of them. <laughs> I think there's one mm-hmm. I'll share. It's it's a funny one mm-hmm. because I didn't expect it's a question someone asked me. Okay. So uh in regards to my career and uh leadership and ministry. Okay. So we were seated in a class, uh, I think it was a linguistic class, and one of my classmates came over to where I was seated. And then I that time I was serving in the Christian Union and we had more ministry engagements, mm-hmm. leadership trainings and all that. So sometimes when uh, people looked at us, they were like, hey, these guys are so serious with the things of God. <laughs> so one of my classmates came to me and asked, hey, Ibrahim, are you going to be married by a pastor? <laughs> <laughs> because of this, you know, uh, mm-hmm. God thinks that he... So I think that's a funny one back in mm-hmm. campus. It was in a lecture hall, I'll not forget. <laughs> and so I sat down and wondered, wow, why did he ask this question? <laughs> Do have been pastoring? <laughs> Okay, I don't know, but it was a funny one anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but campus for me was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I got right company, people who were up to helping me uh, develop as an individual, and people who believe it, believed in me and wanted to see uh, the better side of me. Okay. So, me grow. so, you have basically been in the Christian Union the whole of campus. Oh my God. And then two years <laughs> later, you are still serving with focus. Yeah. You're still Christian Union and all of that. Yes, do you yes. have friends who are not Christians? Oh, yeah, I do. You do? And I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I think I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very many of them. Mm-hmm. Because I think when we are called to be salt and light, that's where it comes in handy, where we reach out to those people who do not know Christ. Okay. Not uh, basically to come and preach to them and go, 
but to make friendship, objective friendship, so they can learn from our lives. Because I have come to learn that sometimes we we can have informal and formal kinds of mentorship. And for me, informal comes in where we are just doing life. I mean, we go out to birthday parties or other parties, weddings and all that. And that's where you meet Christians and non-Christians or people who believe in those who do not believe in Christ. And you don't kind of separate them that this is going to be the group that I hang out with and this one is not going to be that uh, group I do with. So I personally have such kinds of friends who I want them to learn from my life, to look at my lifestyle and see the character of Christ in me. Uh, I'm not saying that I am the utmost, uh, what do I call it, <laughs> like I'm the person to look at mm -hmm. for them to turn to Christ, but I'm basically saying that my lifestyle, I should preach with my lifestyle yeah. when I attend that party, when I was a student attending that lecture, as a STEM staff, you know, attending things like a movie night with students or a student's function like sport. Oh, I love sports. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. Do you, I, do you, do you I play netball. You play netball? Yeah. <laughs> Some people I do. Is that a <laughs> sport? <laughs> but it is. It it is. is so much <laughs> running in netball. Oh, I don't, think I would. don't talk about that. So, <laughs> like, such places, they bring me closer to people, mm -hmm. whether Christian or non Christian. That's where we get to even have conversations. You know, when someone asks your name and you invite them over to your house for tea and you have running conversations and as you play, okay. So I can say I, I love those interactions. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you also win souls back to Christ, right? Oh, yeah. So do you like wait for those opportunities like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, how do you go about it? Like, you typical soul winning opportunity. <laughs> of course, you don't go head on. Like, <laughs> Are you gonna, because sometimes you may intimidate someone or block someone from interacting with you. Mm -hmm. You know that Nini, that um, that um, what do I call it? How you appear and how you bring yourself out really determines how your conversation goes. Mm -hmm. You know, you can imagine when I come carrying my Bible and I'm like. Are you born again? You need to know Christ and all that. Now, for me, it comes from a friendship aspect. Come know you, and I'm interested in what you're doing. It's not that I know you're a student, so where do you stay? Uh, where is home? Uh, which year are you? What are you studying? You know, those things. And then we can now get to that point okay. that you have a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we journey through that. Way. But mine is not a head-on thing. Are you born again or not? <laughs> Starts from a friendship okay. point. It reminds me of the story of Jesus yeah. and Nina Kyle. That's why I can't tell you. Okay, it was Abba. But what was it? Say it for me. Oh, it's not you. So, like, you know, when, when they met up with Jesus, yes. you know, he was he wasn't like... Uh, showing miracles and it, like he went to his place for supper. I mean, give me much more and then I'm chuckling like a queen. So it's really important. My friends out there, anyway, it's really important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so like Jesus interacted with them, you know, mm -hmm. like on a personal level, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then the more they interacted, the more. No, it's it's really beautiful. Yeah. But right. that tells me that you are a personal person like you on a project background. Oh, into relationships. <laughs> I think that's where we begin. Okay. Yeah. So what are your pillars of life? What are your values? Well I'll mention three. Mm -hmm. One is vulnerability, mm -hmm. the other is authenticity, and then modeling. Okay. And uh those are read from First Timothy 4.12, a charge that uh, Paul gives to Timothy. And basically he's saying that let people learn from your lifestyle, how you live, how you speak, and how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. Then let people see that and probably they may know Christ and turn to him. Yeah. So uh, allow me to read uh, that portion from First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Okay. 
and the Bible says that let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift uh, you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. I mean, it's me and those who watch me, me and those who hear me, that in everything, I need to set an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So I need to be authentic. I need to be vulnerable. Because when students come over to my house, I don't want to paint a picture that I am this perfect lady who is here as a STEM staff, you know. Mm -hmm. I also have my flaws. I have struggled with a few things. And I want them to know, you know, when we get into a relationship, it's a building relationship. I need to be vulnerable to them as they are vulnerable to me. I want a student who comes and says, by the way, I am struggling with ABCD. And then we can take it up from there. And modeling, I mean, serving as an example out there. So that someone, a lady will look at me and they will identify with me. Because I am also, it's, it's uh, what Paul says that follow me as I follow Christ. We are pointing each other to Christ. It's, I'm, not the, I'm not the reference point in this case. Mm -hmm. I want to point them, point them to Christ. You see, you think I have grown in the things of God. You think I am a good mentor to you. Christ is the utmost mm -hmm. mentor. He's the person that we want to look up to. So vulnerability is authenticity and there is modeling for me. That's really deep. <laughs> I mean, I think if I, I was listening to you, well, I'm still still at this point. I would yeah. really still love to interact with you. Mm. I think that is very, very deep. Thank you. <sighs> Goosebumps. Anyway, <laughs> five years from now, where do you see yourself? Oh, five years from now. That is 20... 26. 26. Yeah. Right? Well, I mentioned earlier my desire to to pursue psychology. Mm -hmm. So I am seeing myself as a practicing psychologist. Okay. Uh, of course, I'll be in active ministry. I think one of the things that has been affirmed in me through the times that I've served with uh, Focus is the need to to serve amongst students. Okay. So I know five years from now. I'll be in active ministry amongst students, mm -hmm. and then I'll be practicing in psychology. Yes. You can always look back to this interview and see oh yeah, we'll look back to this. Yeah. That's nice. So, mm -hmm. uh, would you please speak to someone, a young lady, someone out there who would want to maybe serve or focus, yeah. mm -hmm. or who would want to reach out to you? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I think one of the things that I would like to tell someone out there who is actually desiring or wants to serve in any other ministry when besides Focus Kenya, because we have many other ministries okay. out there or opportunities to serve out there, it is the most important thing is what you are in Christ rather than what you do for Christ. Okay. I mean, start from there, where, who am I in Christ? What is my relationship like with Christ? And then you can get to the other bits of doing it for Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you are out there, I know serving God is the best, best opportunity you can ever have. For me, it has come with a lot of things. Me impacting other people and them impacting me. So when you are out there and you want to serve the Lord, I think don't give it a second thought. That's the way to go. And it doesn't mean that you leave your career. If you are a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, an accountant, it doesn't mean that you leave your career so that you can get into full-time ministry or something or can't be a STEM staff or something. It means serving God with your career, with your skill. What have you learned back in school? What are the opportunities you have? Are you a business person? If you are out there, 
I think serving God can happen both full time and even in your in your job or workplace. So if you are out there, a young girl, you ask me to speak to a <laughs> <laughs> a lady out there. Um if you are out there and you want to do it, I said don't give it a second thought. But then don't forget who you are in Christ before you can go out and do it for Christ. Okay. If there is anyone who wants to reach you <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. If there's anyone who wants to reach me, I think, uh, guys, access to me. of you out there who wants to reach out to Evelyn, we will put some of her details down there and you shall be able to reach out to her. I believe you can learn a lot from her life and from her as an individual. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember what she has said, that your life is supposed to be like a letter. Mm-hmm. You know, you're supposed to be, you know, walking the talk. You don't just say it and you don't do it. And being a believer is a lifestyle. It's not like a cloth you put on and then you put it back Sunday, isha, isha, you know. It's a lifestyle. Thank you so much for being with us. Please talk to us, comment, share this to anyone who you feel would like or should hear this. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for being with us. And